Well, 2011 was certainly an interesting year and crop maturities made a lot of difference when it came to final yield. So we're gonna talk about what happened in 2011 and what you might wanna consider going into 2012 when it comes to corn and soybean maturities. Let's just talk about our area, Brian, because you know, it's different all over the country. But in our area, a lot of guys would like to start their soybean planting May 1st. They'd like to start their corn planting, you know, the second or third week of April. And they'd like to be all done by the middle of May. Well, this year, there are a lot of guys that never got started till the 1st of June because things yep. were just too wet in the spring. Maybe they didn't have much drainage tile installed. Maybe their area just got a rain every other day. Who knows? But when you start in June, you know you're giving up yield potential and then trying to pick the right maturity is really difficult. Then you compound that with the kind of weather we had over the summer and then finally an early frost that happened in the well, early to mid part of September. That was tough. Okay, so here's the big thing. When you look at soybeans, we had an early frost. So all the earlier maturing soybeans this year did better than the late maturing ones. On the corn side though, a lot of the corns, we had so much heat late in the summer and it was dry. And then we also had a lot of heat after the frost came along. So even if you had a late maturing corn, it still yielded pretty well. It dried down pretty well and you couldn't even tell the difference. We planted really late stuff for our area on a few acres and it was 15% moisture coming right out of the field in the middle of October. It's unheard of. So you start thinking, whoa, I, if I can do that, well, I should plant a lot more acres of that next year. But you can't think that way. You gotta make sure as a farmer, you don't read too much into, well, this happened this year, so next year I'm gonna adjust my whole plan based on this year. You gotta look at the overall long-term average and the long-term average says, you can't get late maturing stuff to always work, but on the other hand, you can't always get early maturing stuff to work. So that's why we encourage you to spread the risk. Well, you know, soybeans, it's really the same story. Last year, we had a 2.3 relative maturity bean. that was by far our best bean. It was fantastic. 75 bushels, the whole field average. And this year, you know, we planted that same bean. We didn't plant it on a huge amount of acres, but we planted it on maybe 10% of our acres or so of soybeans. Yeah, 55 bushel, whole field average. And yeah. it was all because of that early frost. It just killed us. But what do you do? I mean, that's why we only wanted to plant a few acres to that. Last year, it was great. This year, not so good. The average, pretty good. Well, I think what's interesting is you go an hour south of our farm, or maybe an hour and a half south, and that number won all kinds of yield trails. You know, it was all about that frost. And if you had the late maturity beans in many areas, the later the maturity, the worse the yield. The earlier maturity, the better the yield. And next year, it could be completely the opposite. So you need to spread things out just a little bit on your farm. Don't plant all the same maturity in case you have a problem. You don't want to plant all early maturity beans because you may be giving up some yield potential, but you don't want to plant all late maturity beans either and take that big risk. So far, what we've told you is not rocket science. You probably already know that stuff as a farmer. But these next couple of points, we have made some adjustments on our own farm based on fungicide use and based on how much fertilizer we're applying. And you say, well, what's the fertilizer have to do with stuff? Here's what basically used to happen on our own farm. Back 10, 15, 20 years ago, quite often we were short on one or more nutrients. Could have been micronutrients, could have been sulfur. I mean, there are a variety of things. The point is we didn't have a good enough overall fertility program. And so we suffered premature death. And we were able to raise 105 day corn and get that to dry down just fine a lot of falls. And as we continue to step up our overall fertility, what we found is, oh wow, even 100 day corn, we're not getting it to dry down. So we just kept moving our maturity, not dramatically earlier, but maybe five days earlier than what we used to have on average because of the overall fertility program. It's the same kind of thing with the fungicide use. Fungicide is keeping the plants alive a little bit longer. It's a great thing for yield, but the problem is things aren't maturing quite as quickly as they used to. So if you're providing ample fertility, if you're using fungicides, and also one other point, if you're planting higher populations, it also seems like that delays maturity just slightly, not a lot, but a little bit. So it's just kind of tweaking your overall program to get that better because we know that drying costs are tremendous anymore on the corn side. And we also know that when you push maturities on soybeans and you get that early frost, it really hurts yield. So these are some factors you need to think about on your farm. Well, the important thing to remember is all these things work together. 
when you're talking about crop production, you can't just change one thing because one thing is going to impact all the rest of the things in your operations. You have to be willing to make some changes, but you can't get too crazy. And you don't want to base everything on what happened this year. We won't have exactly the same thing as happened this year. One thing that can also delay maturities in your crops is if you have way too many of our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 